Hi, my name is EJ Massa. When I was a kid, I loved ham. When my parents asked me what I wanted for my dinner on my birthday, I'd always ask for ham steak. Yes, that's right. I thought those salty circles of pink rubbery meat were the pinnacle of fine cuisine. As an adult who smokes a lot of meat, I find those processed pre-cooked hams to be extremely lacking. And since I'll be spending time with my red cow family this year, I'm not gonna phone it in and get one of these sad spiral hams. This is Christmas. It's a time for joy. And it's not a time for this, which is basically sadness incarnate. No. I'm gonna cure my own ham. My first thought was to get a picnic roast and cure that, but I found this small pork butt roast at Walmart and that was the perfect size. And I wouldn't have to deal with any bones. That's why I don't like apples. Too many bones. What? Apples don't have bones? What the hell have I been eating? Since this was my first time curing a ham at home, I adapted this simple recipe from allrecipes.com. First, I'm gonna make a brine for the ham by pouring a quart of water into a pot big enough for the roast. I'll add one cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon of pickling spices. I'm just using this McCormick pickling spice. It has cinnamon and allspice and stuff in it. it. Smells wonderful. One tablespoon of prog powder number one. This is a curing salt used for short-term cures like this ham. And for longer-term cures like that dry sausage I made, you'll need prog powder number two, which is the sequel that critics say improved upon the first one in many ways. Prog powder number one is essentially a preservative. It slows the growth of fungus and bacteria, and it makes your hams look pink. I believe red dye is added to prog powder so you don't confuse it with table salt, which could be dangerous. Add over a cup of kosher salt. By weight, this was around nine ounces. I turned on the heat and whisked until everything was dissolved. Once it got right up to a boil and everything was dissolved, I turned off the heat. Then I added a half gallon of ice cold water. You want to make sure the temperature of the brine is cool because you're about to put some pork in it. The pork itself looks quite good. I always like these nets that keep the boneless roast together. I did give it a little rinse after taking it out of the package and now it's ready for the brine. I'll put the roast in the pot and cover it with some cling wrap because the pot lid would prevent me from fitting it in the fridge. There, and as you can see, I'm also drying some sausage. I'm gonna be so filled with prog powder that you could string me up in the basement and preserve me for a hundred years. But don't do that. I don't want that. Don't do that to me. It's Christmas. In addition, I made a glaze for the ham by mixing one fourth cup of maple syrup and one fourth cup of Dijon mustard and about a teaspoon of sriracha for a little kick and I'll save that for later. After a day in the fridge, I turn the roast over. You should cure one day for every two pounds of meat, and since my roast is approximately four pounds, two days should be enough. Then after those two days, it's time to bring this roast over to the Red Cow crew for cooking, and most importantly, eating. Oh hey, now I'm in John Hunt's kitchen, Red Cow's very own John Hunt. And I'll rinse off the roast of the brine and the bits of spice that are clinging to it. If you wanted to, you could soak the ham in some fresh water to get rid of some of the salt. But I'm not going to do that because I love salt. It's a great chemical. Yeah. Right now it's cold and pouring rain, and while I did bring my pit barrel cooker to John's, I'll start the ham in a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven and see if the rain subsides. There we go. The things I do for love. You gonna stuff that thing in that rainy smoker? Yeah, I'm gonna put my ham into the rainy smoker. So it's pouring rain outside and you're still smoking this ham. I think the ham needs smoke. Call me old fashioned, but a ham without smoke. I only did this in the oven because I was running late <laughs> and it was pouring, but now it's pouring a little less. And that bamboo over there, it's a little less wet. So we're gonna do it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Sorry, Gotta get to the smoker. <laughs> Did it. 
Hard mode. Hard mode. <laughs> the roast was in there for about an hour and a half smoking away. Then I decided to brush on some of that glaze. It started to get a bit too cold and windy out there, so I made the executive decision to bring it inside and finish it in the oven. But an hour and a half in the smoke should be enough. I brushed another coat of the glaze and put the roast in with the mac and cheese. About 20 minutes later, the internal temp was at 135 degrees Fahrenheit, but I wasn't in love with the color of the roast, so I decided to glaze it again and bump up the temperature to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And 20 more minutes later, and yeah, whatever, this is good enough. If it wasn't such a cold and rainy day, I'd probably do the whole thing in the pit barrel cooker and it'd probably take around two and a half to three hours, maybe two hours on a really nice day. But just check the internal temperature. I like 135 degrees Fahrenheit, but the government says you should do 145 degrees Fahrenheit, but I don't like listening to the government. So don't come over and arrest me. Don't do it. It's Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's finish this off. Smoky pork, tasty pork, salty meat, eat with a fork, brine in your fridge for several days. Smoke in your grill, ply a sweet glaze. Pig ghost may tonight. Pig ghost may tonight. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Merry Christmas. So now we get to have mac and ham. The ham is so good. I've never had a ham like this. This is like one of the best things I've had. Because <laughs> I've never cured my own ham. I've always gotten the pre-cooked like nitrate ham. And... It's so much better than off the shelf ham. I'm spoiled for life, EJ. It's got such good flavor. It's not overly salty either. No. I've never really been a ham guy. This is freaking delicious. It's delicious, EJ. You get a little bit of that maple. Mm-hmm. And Dijon. I don't know about you boys. But mine's all mixed up in cheese. Pork and mac and cheese goes together. It does pair very well. Okay, why does nowhere serve home cured ham? Why does it, why have I never had this in a restaurant? How long is this ham cured for, EJ, if I can be uh, so yeah. old? If we may pry. It was only like four pounds, yep. so it was only two days. I'm so glad I ran out in the rain into the smoke. I can definitely taste it. It makes it so much nicer. That full body that you're, is from the smoke. Yeah. I wouldn't have gotten that if I just did it in the oven. It's delicious. Everything here was a success. Yeah. We've kind of mastered Christmas, haven't we? <laughs> you make two different kinds of Macs, you, you bake them together, then you ham it up. Wow, nothing like having a holiday ham with your friends. And I definitely recommend you do this recipe. So I'll put a link to my version in the description below. I don't think I can reasonably call anything I've had before this ham. It was really that good. It was the real deal, and I'll be making it for many a holiday in the future. And speaking of that, I hope you have a wonderful holiday and a Merry Christmas. Until next time, bye!